I gotta do this without breaking something. Once again, working on my new daily driver. It's a 2006 Subaru Forester XT. And i uh, done a couple videos on it, just some minor things that I've done to it at this point. But right now, we're gonna start getting into some more major upgrades on it. Um, one problem that uh, is pretty common with these uh, 2.5 liter engines of this year, um, I'm not, I can't remember if it was 2006 and earlier or later, they put these air pumps on it. And what it is, it's just a little fan type motor that blows extra air into the exhaust valves and out through the exhaust to help improve the emissions. However, they do start going bad over time, just like with a lot of parts. And uh, in this particular case, they tend to break and constantly give you codes. And in some of these vehicles, when they give you the check engine light, they also disable your cruise control. Uh, some cases even throw the vehicle into limp mode. And uh, some tools can reset that check engine light, get you going again. But the more common practice is to actually access the programming in the ECU, completely disable those codes, and remove the entire air pump system. And part of what that consists of is these. And I'll give you a good close up here. Um, they're still in the package. These are made by a company called PRL. Uh, more common one you see is a company called Subtle Solutions. Um, but these are pretty much the exact same thing, a little bit less money. Um, I got these through Import Image Racing, uh, free plug for them right there. And what they do is on the heads towards the exhaust ports, there is uh, where the tube comes down. It's a steel tube. I'll show you that in a minute. And what you're going to do is you're going to disconnect that tube, keep that metal gasket that's there, and use one of these plates with the supplied bolts or even the bolts that they already have with it and you're just going to bolt this back on there to block off that plate and then that allows you to pull those tubes out of there and then work towards removing the air pump if you've got somebody that can uh, disable those codes for you. I've got a friend that can do that. I'm going to get to that eventually but at this point I think I'm going to go ahead and, and at least try and get those uh, tubes disconnected from the heads and get these plates put on and we're gonna go in there and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about under the hood. So here we are under the hood of my Forester and this piece right here is the air pump itself. This is what, uh, it's basically just a big fan, pumps air in through this tube. It goes underneath the uh, intercooler to another distribution block type thing. It's got a barometric pressure sensor in it. Not sure if that's gonna need to remain in there at this point. Uh, so that that's gonna stay for now uh, it's kind of hard to show you we're gonna have to pull the intercooler to get to it on this side and on the drivers or I should say the passenger side it's a little bit more difficult let me try and get some light down here it connects to the head way down here underneath the turbo and uh, really the only way to get good access to this side. Uh, a couple of options actually, a lot of people just leave that hose in, they go over on the driver's side, they uh, just put the block off plate on the pipe there and leave it in, or in this case you can come over here, you pull the intercooler, you pull the heat shield off your turbo, and then you have to go underneath, remove the uh, part of your exhaust manifold where the the Y pipe where the two heads come together and up to the up pipe and then you also have to remove the up pipe to get to it. I'm sure there's probably another way you can get in there but uh, uh, this is really the only way I have found where I can get to them so that's what we're going to do and we're going to start underneath the vehicle. Let me grab my light. I'm going to go down here now, the, there's a plastic shield that's normally up underneath here. I have that removed. And what we need to do is come up here, get this heat shield, bring that off, and that it gives us access to the bolts to the manifold on this side so we can get that off and get to our up pipe, which is way back there. 
Part of it, there is an O2 sensor right over here. Uh, let me swing my light over this way. Right there, you can see that blue right there is where our O2 sensor goes in. You can't get to it from here, but if we come into the wheel well, there's an access plate. Let's see if I can get the light again. These things are stupid bright, but they're also hard to aim. So there's a plate right here, just a little plastic thing, couple clips pop out. I popped those already. If we swing that over and out of the way, there is, see if I can find it there. There it is, the O2 sensor. You can just barely see it. If, uh, if I had the tire off, you could see it better, but that gives you access to it so you can spin the O2 sensor out and then you can go up underneath and uh, remove the uh, Y pipe on this side of your exhaust manifold and work up to the up pipe. So I'm gonna start underneath the car, then I'm gonna go on top and I'm going to remove the intercooler and go from there. So let's get to it. Okay, so I got all the bolts out, but they're hanging up because this heat shield goes above the uh, cross pipe that goes from the opposite head. So it looks like I may have to come over here, remove this heat shield, and uh, loosen those bolts up. In fact, I may as well just pull the whole thing off. I do have new gaskets to go in in its place, and that'll even give me a better option to, or a better opportunity to uh, check out my head gaskets from underneath here. So it looks like that's what I'm gonna do. I went ahead and sprayed everything with some uh, penetrating oil and uh, let it sit for a few minutes. And I just gave them all a quick shot and they're gonna break loose real easy on me. So let's go ahead and get these off. But right here, that is the up pipe that goes to the turbo. And that's what needs to come out so I can get to those other ports. So I'm gonna clean stuff up under here a little bit and then we're gonna go up on top and do some work. So now we're at the point we're ready to do some disconnecting from up on top. So let me grab a step stool here. I'll come around on this side. So now I've got you on the passenger side of the car and I'm on the driver's side. Again, we're after getting this pump out and these hoses. Right now, since I haven't gotten the codes disabled, I'm gonna leave the pump in. I'm just gonna go for the hoses. So I need my needle nose pliers. And we're going to start pulling these clamps loose, working our way one hose at a time. Where's my hose That one and that. There we go. There's the Y pipe. That's what splits it off between this one, I believe, is the barometric pressure sensor, and the other one, which is buried underneath here, which is the uh, 
pipe that we just disconnected on the passenger side, the right hand side of the vehicle. And I think this might be a coolant line. I hope not. We'll find out. Yeah, that's a coolant line, but we should be okay. I'll plug it right back in. You can see here's that line that we're after again, right down here underneath. Hopefully we'll be able to get it out. Okay, so this is held in place. I unclipped a couple of sensors here. There's one bolt way down under here. It's a 12 millimeter and I have to use a swivel to try and get on there, hopefully. All right, so to really show you what I'm doing here, I had to switch to a different camera. But what we are after are these two right here. I'm gonna pull this off. Usually there's not a whole lot of tension on it. Took a little bit of persuasion, but... about getting this thing out of here. And that's supposed to be the harder one to pull out, so let's hope so. I had to go grab a jacket. Too many keys. Finally managed to get this bolt to turn. Wasn't easy. So I finally got that out. So that takes care of that. Now it goes way down underneath here. Okay, so I've gotten all of that out. Now it's time to uh, put the blanking plate in there. And uh, of course my main camera died and I got the hose off the other side, or the pipe off the other side rather. So it's ready to just uh, bolt right back up on there. see it right there towards the top center uh, fully installed and that part of the deletes done we're gonna go back up top and I'll show you what I'm leaving up there okay so back up on top here is the uh, one valve you can see it sitting down here 
Um, this is the one that went to the passenger side, the right side of the engine. That can be completely removed. I'm gonna leave it in for the time being uh, till I get the codes deleted or disabled out of the ECU. This one here has a barometric pressure sensor in it. Not 100% sure if that's gonna affect anything because that either works off the MAP sensor or the MAP sensor, one of the two, and um, I'm pretty sure that's a MAP sensor and my MAP sensor over there on the uh, intake air box itself. So those two parts for right now are staying. Um, this one staying permanently. The other one when it comes out, I'll just tape up the wiring harness on it. The other big part is this uh, fan. It's basically a blower. Again, I'm just gonna leave it for right now till uh, I get the codes disabled and at which time there's just like right here underneath this relay, there's a bolt, right here's a bolt and that'll literally pull this whole piece right up out of here. Just have to unplug it. And then there's a fuse that's in here that will pull and that'll disable that. Taking care of that whole job, now it's just putting it back together which is a reverse process of what you saw me do. I'm not gonna show you that. Uh, I think this video has run long enough. Stay tuned, I have got some more stuff on the way in the future. I hope you will uh, subscribe, click that bell to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the future.